London cabbies. Gotta love them. This is the place, here on the right. To afford a place like this in London, you've got to be good at something. So, we clear on how we're going to do this? Yeah, we're two insurance investigators, see? We finoodle our way inside, butter Manofsky up, and then get the dirt on him, right? Fanoodle? Yeah, fanoodle. You remember how to fanoodle, don't you, Nico? George, how could I ever forget? Good, because I suspect we're gonna need Major League Fanoodling to get in this one. You got it. Excuse me? Hello? On your bike, darling. This is a private residence. We're here to see Mr. Madovsky. So? We have important business with Mr. Madovsky. And who the hell might you be? I'm Nico Kalar, and this is my colleague, Georges Stobert. Well, isn't that cozy? Can you count, darling? Yes, of course. Well then, one, I don't know you all laughing boy here from Adam. Two, you ain't got no business around here. And three, I don't like French birds. Comprenez? Hmm. No answer. Ah, it's locked. Showing him my press card would have blown my cover. Guess who? What do you want? Do you work for Mr. Madovsky? No, I'm standing here pruning his edges for a laugh. Course I blooming work for him. Maybe you didn't hear me the first time. Get lost! It was topiary in progress. He had the typical features of an Englishman who liked beer and football. The bush was perfectly shaped. The bush was perfectly shaped. It was the intercom system for Madovsky's house. Hey, Georges. What's up? Seriously, how are we going to do this? According to Ronnie, Madovsky is the real deal. Coming from Ronnie, that's quite a compliment. If Madovsky is the killer... We need to be careful. Which suggests... I use my Gallic chant? Exactly. Hi, guess who? What do you want? Nice bush. Bush? This is so much more than just a bush. Oh, I am sorry. It's art, love, or to be precise, topiary. And as everybody knows, 
Topiary is a transitioned form. That's right. A statement of man's dominance over nature. A metaphor for the human condition. And yet... It's not enough, is it? Not for the big questions. Life, death... Right and wrong. Tell me about it. You struggle, monsieur? Day and night. That is the human condition. Can we ever escape it? It is possible through meditation, contemplation. I see. It is our only salvation. Well, you give me food for thought, you have. Any time. Much appreciated. At a difficult time. You are welcome, monsieur. So, anyway, this is my latest piece. What do you think? It's a uh, very nice. Eagle? A two-headed eagle. Result. Get in there, my son. Yes, it's a Russian Imperial Eagle for the boss. You spotted it straight off. I owe you one, lady. You have got that rare quality. Real insight. No, please. You have a rare talent. Do you know Mr. Madovsky's driver? Driver? He's, uh, he's out of town, I think. We have important business with Mr. Madovsky. I need a good reason to bother the boss with this. He's a busy man. I understand, but I think he'll want to speak with us. What makes what you have to say so important? La Maledexio, a painting that belongs to him, has been stolen. If he wants his insurance claim processed quickly, then he'll want to speak with us. I think he might be annoyed if he finds out you never even told him we came around, right? Okay, okay. Hang on, I'll phone him now. Yeah, Mr. Madovsky? French bird. Yeah. Yes, boss. Right, I will do. You've piqued the boss's interest. That isn't always a good thing. The gate should be open. I'll take you inside. Follow me, please. Mr. Madovsky will be right with you, madame. Well, we're in. Now what? We'll make him think we're all set to pay out on the policy. See if we can get him to talk. Welcome, welcome. Good day, monsieur. My name is Nico Collard. And this is my assistant, Georges Tabar. You are here to discuss La Maledictio, yes? Correct. I am surprised to see you. My agreement with the gallery specified that my ownership should be kept in the strictest confidence. It would appear that agreement has been broken. A man has been killed, monsieur. An agreement is an agreement. My apologies for disturbing you, monsieur, but I'm afraid we must ask you some questions. So be it. The loss of a painting is nothing compared to the loss of a life. Ask away. How did you come into possession of La Maledictio? I purchased it at auction. Do you have receipts for the painting? Of course. I have already sent them to your office. Ah, these things take time to process. What is there to process? I own the painting, someone stole it, and your company provided me with insurance. I am the victim here. A state you share with the deceased, monsieur. 
Did you know Henri, the gallery owner? Oh, purely on a professional basis. My restorer recommended his gallery to me. Did you ever meet him personally? No, no, only via email. I rarely fly. I'm carbon neutral, you know. Very conscientious, monsieur. Well, the planet won't save itself. <laughs> we have reason to believe that the theft was an inside job. Oh, that is terrible. The staff at the gallery were so pleasant to deal with. But such is human nature. I trust this won't delay the insurance claim. I'm sure matters will be sorted out soon. Your restorer, how does he fit into all this? Hobbs. Well, he did a little cleaning work on La Maladexia, that's all. What connection do you have to Vera Security? I've never heard of it. There is strong evidence that ties you to Vera Security. Oh, you are beginning to sound like a policeman, madame. We are merely doing our jobs, monsieur. We must leave no stone unturned. I would leave this particular stone unturned, if I were you. I'd rattled him, but I didn't want to push too hard. Of course. We will check our information again. I would do that. I think that is enough for now. When do you expect the claim to be paid out? It will not be long, monsieur. When exactly? Surely you can give me a date. Monsieur Medovsky, I'm sure you... Please excuse the interruption, sir. What is it, Shears? Hobbs is here. Tell him I'm busy. He mentioned the uh, portfolio, sir. For pity's sake, can he not just follow simple instructions? Uh, please excuse me for a moment. The gardener's called Shears? Yeah, probably not what his mother christened him. What a creep. Very clever creep at that. We got nothing on him, and he knows it. He just brushed off the Vera connection. We need something else to get under his skin. I could use Marquez's leverage. Yeah, it's just one man's word against another. So what else can we do? Let's take a look around. Maybe there's something here we can use against him. Good idea, Georges. You search, I'll keep watch at the window. Madovsky in Libya. Happy days. What kind of guy hangs a picture of himself and Colonel Gaddafi on the wall? The kind who will commit murder in order to steal their own painting. It was a Russian privatization voucher. I wondered why Madovsky displayed it so proudly. Madovsky had left the cabinet open. On the shelf inside was a business card and a scribbled note. I picked up the business card. It read, Wilfred Hobbs, Fine Art Restoration. I made a note of the address. Then I put the card back where I'd found it. No point arousing Madovsky's suspicions. It was a thank you note from a British politician. Huh, Madovsky certainly had some dubious friends. Hmm, a Russian imperial egg. It looked rather plain. See a penny, pick it up, then all day you'll have good luck. Everything was in Cyrillic, except for a number, 1869. I suspected the medals weren't from the Moscow Debating Society. The note read, L. Serp drawings for you to check. W.H. Now we're cooking with gas. I wondered if the painting could be in the portfolio that Madovsky had taken. 
It seems Armadovsky has friends in low places. It's like my boss said, the guy wants to be a player. Russian novels. Madovsky was clearly a big Tolstoy fan. Madovsky had an extensive collection of management books. The Seven Secrets of Leadership, 2009. The Business Bonaparte, 1983. Office Eagle or Management Mouse, 1998. I should have guessed. Keyboard was Cyrillic. I didn't know the symbols. If I'd been able to remember the layout of a U.S. keyboard, I might have been able to figure it out. Leather-bound classics, bought by the yard, no doubt. It was a beautifully inlaid cigarette box. The catch had snapped. The paper clip just flexed and slipped off the catch. By extraordinary good fortune, the coin I'd picked up was the perfect shape to flip open the broken catch. Fancy that. Romanovs. The same brand of cigarettes that were in the ashtray in Vera Security. Keys are always useful. Can you hear what they're saying? Yes. You should not have turned up here, Mr. Hobbs. I made it clear I would deliver the package later today. I wanted to make sure it got to me all right. I've got a lot of work to do on it. This is most inconvenient. Madovsky's arguing with his visitor, Ops, about the portfolio. That portfolio is important, I'm sure of it. It was locked. The study door's open now. Hear anything else interesting? Hang on. Listen, Hobbs, just take the portfolio and do your work. You are nervous, and I don't like that. Understood. I have got a few questions, though. I do not like questions, either. Hurry up. I noticed a couple of people arriving. Who were they? They look like coppers. They were from the insurance company. Has the... Hobbs is going to head off with the portfolio. Whatever's in there is important. We need to stay with it. I got Hobbs' address from his card. When we're done here, we should check it out. Okay, Josh, but hurry. Madovsky will be back soon. I'm going to check out the study. Okay. Wow, there must be millions of dollars worth of art on these walls. These paintings would have kept a critic enraptured for hours, but I didn't have time to dwell. The painting reminded me of my Aunt Maud. I never liked her. Madovsky certainly loved art, or pretended to. Madovsky had a truly impressive collection of paintings.
The desk was magnificent. The lettered panels appeared to conceal buttons. The chair was fancy and probably more expensive than it looked. Filthy habit. Those two little holes were just waiting for me to put my fingers in. I resisted the urge. The drawer was open. My heart skipped a beat. But inside I saw only a candy bar wrapper. should have guessed. Keyboard was Cyrillic. I tried to remember how that row of keys read on a U.S. keyboard.
A secret drawer popped open. I knew that publication date would be significant. At last, I was going to discover Madovsky's secrets. It certainly wasn't Madovsky's sock drawer. Hey, Nico, come see this. I think we've struck gold. Hang on, I'm coming. Look, a letter from a guy called Gainin. His company, Wolfram, want to purchase La Maledizio. They're offering way over the asking price. Anything connecting Madovsky to Vera? Well, let's see. Here we go. A lease for Vera security. Aha! Then we have the proof we need. Hang on, what's this? Expenses for a Mr. Shears. Waterloo Motors, one helmet. These are from Paris. Madame La Trex. <clears throat> Hotel Britannique. Pizza. Nico. Pizza. I think your friend Shears might just be Henri's killer. Charles, what have we got ourselves into? I, I just heard the front door close. Madovsky's coming. Put everything back in order, quick! Right. He'll never suspect we just ransacked his house for evidence. Jules, the coin! Damn, no time. Look cool, Nico. I'll handle this. I apologize for the lengthy wait. As you can imagine, my time is at a premium. That's fine, Mr. Madovsky. I think we're almost finished anyway. And payment? Very soon, monsieur. Very soon. Is there anything else I can assist you with? Nice collection of medals you have there, Mr. Madovsky. I earned them serving my country. Anywhere interesting? Chechnya. Ever been there? Uh, no, can't say I've had the pleasure. Is that a first edition of War and Peace? Of course. Printed in 1869, a great year for my country's literature. And Tolstoy is the master. Is that a picture of you with Colonel Gaddafi? A deeply wonderful man. He was a great fan of the Impressionists. Well, he certainly left quite an impression on Libya. You must be upset at the theft of La Maledizio. Yes, I'm disappointed that someone would kill for such a minor piece. So, what brought you into the art business, Mr. Madovsky? Oh, an eye for great artists, an appreciation of fine culture, and a love of <laughs> what you Americans call the greenback. So this Hobbs guy, good friend of yours, is he? No, we simply have a business arrangement. We've been through this already. Now please, if you're quite finished, I'm a busy man. Thank you for your time, Monsieur Madovsky. We'll be in touch soon. Well, no prizes for guessing where we go now. Hobbs' place, right? Got it in one. Madovsky's pretty shady, don't you think? He bought our act, though. You make a pretty good insurance man, Georges. Yeah, who'd have thought it? By the time he realizes we're not assessing his claim, we'll have cracked the case and be toasting our success. Here's hoping. Looks like rain. Come on, let's get that cab. Taxi! I think we just stepped off the London tourist trail. I guess this Hobbes character doesn't like visitors. Not the kind of place you'd expect to find a restorer of old masters. Unless you didn't want to attract attention. He's attracted ours. Let's see what Mr. Hobbes knows about La Maledixio. And let's try and get a look inside that portfolio.
The door was locked. Looking through the window, I could see that there was nothing in the van. Hobbs must have taken the portfolio inside. I decided to leave the handbrake alone. Slasha! I popped open the van's hood. The engine was held together by rust and dirt. Everything was covered in a sticky film of dirty black oil. Half the wiring wasn't connected to anything. It was the van's engine. I didn't really have any reason to sabotage it. It was one of two horns in the van. It didn't seem to be connected to anything else under the hood. Two wires hung loose from it. It was the van battery. A bundle of short, severed wires was connected to the battery. None of the wires were connected to anything. It was one of two horns in the van. It didn't seem to be connected to anything else under the hood. Two wires hung loose from it. A loose wire hung from the right-hand horn. A loose wire hung from the left-hand horn. If I had some spare cable, I could connect it to the wires from the cab. A bundle of wires came into the engine bay from the dashboard. Many of the wires seemed to lead nowhere. The large dumpster was full of garbage. Piles of junk mostly boxes of old paints and scraps of picture frames. Mixed in were wires, cardboard, and some dubious-looking old clothes. George Stobart. Ah, Monsieur Stobart. I trust you have obeyed my instructions not to leave Paris. Of course, Inspector. I see. Twelve o'clock sharp, monsieur. Or, as you would say, high noon. Uh, sure. Any failure to comply, and I shall have you extraordinarily rendered. Have a nice day now. And you? That was Nave. We're required back at the gallery tomorrow for a crime scene reconstruction. Let me guess. Non-attendance is a criminal offense? You got it. I had found just what I needed. Two lengths of wire. Climbing drain pipes was something I preferred to avoid, unless I had a great reason to do so. It was Hobbs' mailbox. There was a note hanging out. For a second, I debated the morality of mail snooping. It was a short debate, and I won.
I decided to open the letter. Dear Mr. Hobbs, due to previous incidents, we are writing to inform you that we will no longer be sending models to your address. It went on to discuss Hobbs' temper and other alleged infractions, some of which still carry the death sentence in certain less sophisticated cultures. Interesting. This could come in useful. The letter advised Mr. Hobbs that no more models would be sent to his address. It was a thick metal security door. Hobbs clearly took his security seriously. I don't think there's anyone home. There's a light on upstairs. There was definitely someone home. The engine bay was a mess. I connected the wires from the cab to the horn. I used the wire to join the battery to the horn. Not a sound. The horn wasn't working. I'd need the keys to start the engine. I had no reason nor any desire to steal Hobbs's van. If only I'd hung out with the cool kids at school, I'd have learned how to hotwire a truck. If only I'd hung out with the cool kids. That wasn't worth trying. That would be pointless. Whiskey. Whew. Very strong stuff. I used the wire to join the battery to the horn. The horn wasn't working. I'd need the keys to start the engine. I had no reason nor any desire to steal Hobbs's van. A pile of paint, wire, and other junk. There was nothing else of interest in the junk.
I snipped the wire in half. I'd already cut one wire in half. The wire was just long enough to connect the battery to the horn. I connected the wires from the cab to the horn. Everything was wired up. The horn had power. I figured that should get Hobbs' attention. All right, hold your blooming horses. What are you up to with my van? Hello there. Uh, we fixed your horn. So I hear. Now what are you doing in my yard? Sorry to bother you again, Mr. Hobbs, but... Well, that could have gone better. He's not exactly the friendliest of characters. I decided to give it another blast. For crying out loud, will you leave my van alone? Sorry, uh, just need a quick word, Mr. Hobbs. Hello there. We'd like to discuss some restoration work with you. Then make an appointment. I'm busy. This Hobbs guy doesn't exactly like visitors. There must be some angle we can use to talk our way inside. I decided to give it another blast. You two again? What is it this time? Afternoon, Mr. Hobbs. We're from the model agency. About blooming time. I'm on a deadline. You better come up. About time you two showed up. Hello, Mr. Hobbs. I was just wondering if... Ah, 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 can it, Goldilocks? I don't have time for chit-chat. Just get undressed behind that screen. Undressed? That was the deal. An extra 20 quid, because I need you with your kit off. The studio was freezing. And as for you, darling, no need to get undressed. I've got a vivid imagination, so I'll just use that. Either way, just go sit over there on that rug and give me your best belly pock floozy. That's perfect. Just hold it there. Nico made for a good distraction. I just needed to figure out how to get a look inside that portfolio. How about a top-up, Mr. Hobbs? Thanks, but I've already got a glass full. Hey, I'm still drinking that. It was a full glass of whiskey. A variety of liquor bottles, all empty. Hobbs had loosely sketched a young couple and an elderly lady sitting next to an overturned picnic basket. The three characters were naked. Behind them, two men in suits were chatting. I didn't want to play around with the negligee. Those days are long gone. 
but I wondered who it did belong to. My, my! If it isn't George Stobart! Lady Piermont! Oh, my! You're... Naked? Of course! As an artist's muse, one often finds oneself en pelotas. Now, George, don't be shy. Come here and give me a big hug. That day was the day the nightmares had begun. Trapped, smothered, choking on lavender. Uh, George, darling, pass me my robe. It's terribly cold in here. Oi, what are you doing with the blooming robe on? God help me, but you're supposed to be naked. I've got a deadline to meet. Well, you won't be meeting any deadlines with manners like that. And besides, it's freezing in here. Lady Piermont and I had met before. She was larger than life, in every way. Lady Piermont. Oh, George, be a darling and sort the heating out in here. I'll see what I can do. Hey! Leave that dial alone. Sorry, but Lady Piermont is cold. I thought... Look, pal, I know it's brass monkeys in here, but the wiring in this building is ancient, and the fuse box won't take it. Her Majesty will just have to get used to chapel hat pegs. Lady Piermont, Mr. Hobbs won't let me turn up the heating. Well, we'll soon see about that. Oh, crumbs. If you do not adjust the heating, I shall refuse to cooperate. Lady Piermont, it's the circuits. They won't take the strain. You know what old buildings are like. In which case, I see no reason for this session to continue. Whoa, Lady Piermont, let's not be too hasty. I'm sure I can accommodate your needs. Good. Perhaps you can start by letting George here turn up the heating. Oh. <sighs> Oh, go ahead then, but be careful. The power in here is, uh, temperamental. I turned the thermostat up as far as it would go. I wondered if the suspicious wiring could be used to my advantage. It was an empty whiskey glass. How about another whiskey? Well, don't mind if I do. I wasn't going to mess around with that wiring. I didn't need to sit. It was time for action. The fuse box was emitting a sinister buzzing sound. It should have been condemned years ago. I'd better not touch the thermostat again. A word if I may, Lady Piermont. For you, George, I'm all ears. How can I help? How did you come to be working with Mr. Hobbs? Wheresoever a bohemian needs a helping hand, George, mine is always at the ready. 
And what better way to help than to expose one's flesh to the sensuous brushstrokes of such a talent? So what have you been up to since our last encounter, Lady Piermont? Charity work, dear boy. Oh, any particular kind? Young men, George. So many have lost their way. I try to guide them best I can. Do you know anything about a stolen painting called La Maledicio? Oh, oh, is this another of your adventures, George? <laughs> How delicious. Shh. My heart's a tremor, George. Do you think Wilf is mixed up with this? Maybe, but I need you to act normally until we're sure. Mum's the word, Georgie. Can you keep a secret, Lady Piermont? I am the very soul of discretion, as you know. You see that portfolio by Hobbs's table? We need to take a peek inside. Be still, my beating heart. Just give me the nod and I'm putty in your hands. How about a shot of this, Lady Piermont? Oh, no, dear. I don't touch the stuff. Reminds me of husband number five. Or was it six? Terrible bore, anyway. I'm strictly a gin girl. Ice and a slice and a whiff of tonic. What do you think of this, Lady Piermont? Not much, Georgie. Not much. Piermont wouldn't be interested. That's all for now. Excuse me, Mr. Hobbs. I have a letter for you, Mr. Hobbs. From the model agency? Being in my life, models. Speaking of which, why have you still got your clothes on? Excuse me, Mr. Hobbs. Oh, what do you want? You're supposed to be sprawled naked on that rug with the family jewels out. Yeah, well, um, about that. Could I just ask you a couple of questions first? Blow me. A model who's shy and chatty. It must be my birthday. How long have you been using Lady Piermont as a model? Using her? I can't get rid of her. Yeah, about this naked sprawling... Oh, what's up? Afraid of the shrinking effects of a cold warehouse? No, it's just... First time. A little embarrassed. Well, if it helps, we can all get naked. No, definitely not. Well then, what are you waiting for? Let the monkey see the nuts. We had a saying in the Stobart family. If a job's worth doing, then do it with your pants on. But I thought you were a restorer. But you're working on this painting from scratch. Well, yeah. Look, some clients uh, want a painting that they don't own, restored from scratch, if you know what I mean. Uh, no, I don't. Don't worry, sunshine. Ignorance is bliss. I hear you did the restoration of that painting that got stolen recently in Paris? I might have. It's a fine piece. You can smell the pain in every brushstroke. Do you know a Russian called Madovsky? You know Madovsky? Everyone in the London art scene knows Madovsky. And everyone in the London art scene who likes their kneecaps knows when to keep their trap shut. Oh, you! Get down from there, it's private! Oh, sorry! Wow, 
an old Boffson Wang stereo. I hadn't seen one of those for years. I turned the volume up a few notches. It was locked. I wondered what was behind the door. Oh, you. Get down from there. You'll trip the power in the whole building if you're not careful. Blowing the power would certainly have distracted Hobbs, but the elevator alone wasn't going to trip the whole system. I'd better not touch the thermostat again. A well-worn stool sat in the corner. I wasn't going to mess around with that wiring. A word if I may, Lady Kilmer. For you, George, I'm all ears. How can I help? Lady Kilmer, we need your help. How thrilling! What do you need? Subterfuge? Pleasure domain? Um, actually, I just need you to step on that lift behind you. Oh, but of course. Is this good, George, darling? Perfect. Now, just stay right there. Not again. This is going to be one of those days. A straw had broken the camel's back. Hobbs was very drunk. How about another whiskey? Last smashing. Far away. didn't need to sit. It was time for action. Now was my chance. Hobbs was good, but no way was he going to sketch me in the nude.
more of Hobbs' sketches. The model looked familiar. Impressionist sketches. Well, it wasn't La Maledicio, but it did appear to be a study for an element of the painting, the Ouroboros. There was something different about the image in the center. I figured the sketch might come in handy, so I took it. What the heck? I told you that portfolio was private. Huh? Well, that was fun. Just like when you were a private dick, George. So, you're not models? No, Mr. Hobbs. Well, you can't be a copper. You're not stupid enough. So what the blazes are you doing in my studio? We're investigating the theft of La Maledicio. I told you I just restored it. That's what I do. Restore paintings. And these sketches? Studies done during the restoration. Nothing more. I've got now to do with what happened after that painting left this studio. How was I to know it was going to get Henri killed? Hang on a second. How do you know Henri's dead? Look, he and I went back a long way. Le Lézard Bleu was on the rope, so I got the painting into his exhibition. Nothing like this was supposed to happen. We're not accusing you of anything, Mr. Hobbs. We just want to get to the bottom of this. I get that, and I'll help you however I can, but this mess is way above my pay grade. How come you needed to make so many sketches of the painting to restore it? Restoration is not about throwing a lot of paint around. It, it takes research. The surf is a complicated painting. A lot of subtext, a lot of symbols. Tell me about the symbols in La Maledicio. Very Christian, deeply religious, but not exactly orthodox. The sort of thing that would upset a priest? There was one at the gallery telling everyone how evil it was. As I said, it's not exactly orthodox, and the church can be very touchy about orthodoxy. Especially now they can't just burn anyone they disagree with. Why would anyone want to steal La Maledicio? It's not exactly a famous painting. True, but there is something special about it that's hard to describe. There's conviction in every brushstroke. Whoever El Serp was, he had a tale to tell. The symbolism is deeply religious. We have reason to believe that Madovsky is mixed up in a theft of La Maledicio. Eh? <laughs> what would he gain from stealing his own painting? We have strong evidence that Madovsky is not the real owner. He'll have a hard time proving that. Medovsky has a full set of provenances for the painting. It traces its legitimate ownership all the way back to the painter. Why didn't Medovsky mention them? Because they're not with him. Henri's got them. Or had them. And Henri is dead. So ask his partner. Lane? Lane, yeah, Lane. Look, pal, you're wasting your time looking for conspiracies here. And you're wasting my time if you're not actually going to get naked. Go get the provenance from Lane, and everything will turn out hunky-dory. But it also puts Marquez's story into question. Not my problem, darling. Now both of you, get lost. I've got a painting to finish. And we have a critic to interrogate. Someone's lying, but who? Is it the gangster or the old Spaniard? The painter or the art critic? I need to head back for Nave's reconstruction. What about the evidence from Medovsky's house? Will you give it to Nave? I think I should. And I can put the squeeze on Lane. Ask him about the provenance. Good. I've got lunch with Ronnie tomorrow. This story is hurting up, and I want to make sure he keeps me on it. Taxi? Here I was again at the crime scene. Inside the gallery, I could see lots of activity. Nave preparing for the reconstruction, no doubt. 